expressed on this program not necessarily reflect the views of the station to police or ownership. It's not easy to find out what the president is doing. 
the story show, put away his rock and step to me before the gates of hell there is nothing. Commit the adultery. And it's so bad her that she does put away uh her parents her that she put away the adultery. Now you say to say that God hates divorce. He hates divorce and he is ready to hate divorce when it comes at the uh, at the end or because of the fornication uh, or adultery, which also he hates. Now, am I, well, okay, am I a hate preacher? Am I a preacher of hate if I simply preach what God says about marriage and divorce? Does that make me a hater? If I tell someone, look, in order to be right in the eyes of God, you can't live with this woman or you can't have this woman to be your wife or you can't have this husband, this man to be your uh, husband. Does that make me a hater? have a man named John the Baptist who was a Herod, and he had told Herod that his married woman, well, I know this, Herod had laid hold of John and bound him and put him in prison for an obvious sake. His brother Philip won out. So John had said, you know what, it is not lawful for a thief to have her. Now, was John a hater? Was John a preacher of hate when he was simply saying what God Someone else back with that? Was that a hate speech? Are we to believe that that is, that is so uh, despicable that you shouldn't say anything about marriage and divorce and what God's plan for marriage was all along? Let me tell you, one of the reasons why we are in such bad shape in our country is because people think that it is hateful to dare say anything. Do anything they want to do, just get up and get married and get divorced for any reason. It's not cool, it's not it's not chic or whatever, it's not it's not the thing to do, it's not politically correct to condemn someone for going against what God said. Well, if that makes me a hate preacher, then so be it. Then I'll be a hate preacher. I'll pre- I'll preach hate if that's if that's the way you want to define it. Thank you. 
this little pool of pain in there. In fact, the one who was doing wrong that called in and used filthy language, poor language, they're the ones who called in and called us uh, uh, haters, who called us stupid, who called us all kinds of things. What did you say what God said? No. This is what God said in Jeremiah 7. Jeremiah 7, 21. This is what he says in regard to worship. He said, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Will your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices be pleasant? For I spent not unto your prophets, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, concerning those burnt offerings and sacrifices. But this thing commanded by them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. Now, friends, God did talk to them about burning sacrifices and offerings. But that wasn't the first thing he said. The first thing that he said is, obey my voice. Later he did command them concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. But what Jeremiah is telling his people, or what God is telling his people to Jeremiah is, look, the first thing that I told you about was not sacrifices and preparing them and sacrifices and offerings. The primary thing I wanted you to get into your little soul, the primary thing I wanted you to get into your mind or lust, is you should obey my voice. God wants obedience rather than sacrifice. It's the same, it's the same lesson that, that King Saul learned the hard way in 1 Samuel 15 and verse 22, when God told him to up and destroy the Amalekites and they saved the best of life and spared the king. This is what Samuel said. Unto Saul, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, it is to obey as better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. God wants obedience first. I'm just telling you, if you want God to love your worship, if you want God to love your worship and not hate it, you need to give him what he wants. God of the Spirit and the Spirit of the Lord must, must worship in the Spirit and the truth. That is, they have to have the right attitude, the right spirit, the right mindset, and in truth, God's Word is true. John 7 17. Why? Why did you get so upset with what I told you to tell you to do? Well, I told you to get the right love of my I will tell you, God will hate, He will despise your worship. Now, I know you may get tired of all the, the constant reminders that when you have to catch up on the music and you want your band in the music and they have time, and when you have all the praise things, and when you have all these added things to God's word to worship, and you say, Let me tell you, God, I'm going to tell you the truth. God hates it. God hates it. He despises it. If he hated and despised the worship of his Said that I love you. And I'm trying to get you to see that acceptable worship becomes decently in order for it to be full of your soul. And then it is done according to what God said that I think you for. So God, I'm not the spirit of hate. Is that what you're saying to me? You better be a hater. What's the name of your hater? If I'm telling you what God hates, when it comes to your worship. Don't hate. Don't be. Don't be a hater. I'm just saying, don't 
somewhat because of their sexual orientation, that is, something that they made of their own free will and their own choice, what is it?